Hello human artists, my name is Ao, and today I'm going to be discussing how to draw and not to submit your mistakes in the process. Before I continue, I want to clarify that this video is for people who want to improve their art and not for people who just want to draw for fun. You should draw however you like and whenever you like and however you like it. But if you are serious about developing art as a skill, this video might be more helpful for you. So. Let's get started. I'm going to embarrass myself today by showing you one of my earliest attempts at making a webcomic. I started drawing this webcomic when I was in, I think, 5th or 6th grade. It was before that I had decided that I really wanted to be an artist seriously, so I just wanted to make a comic about all the goofy characters that my friends and I would come up with in the school playground. Uh, I think it's pretty good for someone in fifth grade who's not a serious artist, but as you can tell, it's got a lot of problems. First and foremost being that I was drawing this webcomic without ever reading webcomics, or comics in general. I didn't even know that, you know, a comic had to be legible. There's so much text here that's completely ill illegible, and it includes jokes like this building is called Moonbox, but you can barely read it. Um, also, I would draw the same characters in the same way over and over and over again, so that when I decided I wanted to be a serious artist later in life, I had already cemented mistakes in my brain because I had drawn it the same way over and over and I didn't use references. So I was drawing it wrong and I wasn't correcting myself and I would draw it this way for years. So I really stunted my development as an artist because I didn't reference and I didn't attempt to correct course before it was too late. Now, how do I fix this problem? And how do you fix this problem? Well, it's pretty simple. References! <laughs> you need references! Now, I just went into Google and I looked up a few images of things that I want to try to redraw. I also got this coffee shop uh, image just to demonstrate what I could have done as a child instead of drawing what I thought a coffee shop building would look like. I could have gone into Google and looked up coffee shops and actually drawn a coffee shop with a road that my character could have been crawling on. Uh, because the joke is that he's <laughs> crawling to the coffee shop imagining that he's crawling through hell to get there. Uh, and a lot of my jokes didn't even work because I wasn't drawing legibly enough. So what I'm going to attempt to redraw are these two panels. So I want to redraw this character standing here without a shirt. That's why he didn't get service. And I want to redraw this dragon character that I made up because I didn't even know how dragon snouts worked. So he doesn't really even look like a dragon. So let's get started on using our references. So what you should do when you're learning, when you're first starting out, or when you just want to save time, you should absolutely do this. A lot of artists will tell you not to do this, but I say do it. It's fine. It helps you learn. Trace your models. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower the opacity of this model. And I'm going to quickly map out what the shapes are that he's making. So. We've got sort of a pentagon shape here. And box shape here. And the legs sort of start all the way up here. If you do it quickly and you think about the shapes things are making, it makes your life a lot easier as you apply this to your long-term memory. It's not going to apply to your long-term memory as easily if you just go in really close and like, you know, trace every single curve and every single line and every single bump. You're not actually learning when you're doing that. Uh, all it's doing is just monkey see, monkey do. It's going to be harder for your brain to conceptualize these things. But 
if you're drawing on top of it and thinking about the shapes things are making and what sorts of lines that are easiest to use to get across a certain idea then it's going to be easier for you to apply that on your own because it's getting it's getting locked into your long-term memory at that point and so I am not going to show you the whole process of drawing this I'm just going to speed it up or do some cuts because it's going to be kind of boring to just sit there and watch me draw without me actually talking or saying anything so let's go into fast forward motion Slowing down real quick to teach you a real quick trick if you don't know this already. At least in Clip Studio Paint, go to Edit, Transform, and Flip Horizontal. Do this once in a while while you draw because it sort of reverses the image and resets your brain and helps you notice things that were kind of off before and it helps you fix them. Because your brain starts to get used to a certain angle that you're drawing in. But most things uh, that, like most subjects that people tend to struggle drawing, like people or animals, they're, they're symmetrical. And so depending on how you look at it, it's still going to have roughly the same anatomy, whether you're looking at it, you know, if they're facing this way, you know, or, you know, the reverse of that, like a mirror image, it's still going to be kind of the same. So that kind of helps you find out if there's any wonkiness in it, like in the pose or just in the anatomy. So another thing I did when I was a kid was I drew wings the same way every time. That's why I always did the same sort of fold in the wings, uh, the same angle. Uh, he kind of, his wings look the same in pretty much every panel because I never looked at wings. I never looked at bat wings. I never looked up dragon wings. I just drew what I thought a wing looked like. So I'm going to be referencing this demon guy uh, for his wing shape now, so let me uh, quickly put that in. So now we have my old dragon character that I made when I was in fifth grade, sort of redrawn with my uh, modern self sensibilities of how to use references. So halfway through recording this video, I decided not to redraw the green dragon character by using these dragon references that I found because I felt like the video was already too long and I've already made my point. So in summary. If you don't know how to draw something, you should look up references. Just Google whatever you're confused about and do a quick
quick draw over, do a study of it, try to submit that into your memory instead of this. Because if you draw it this way for too long, for too often, it's going to be a lot harder to unlearn that as you grow as an artist. So, use references liberally, and don't be afraid of tracing them. You're not a cheater by tracing, as long as you are applying that knowledge into your brain. Then it should come out a little easier when you're drawing without references later on in your studies. Anyway, I hope that helped. Please leave a like and a comment if you are confused about something and would like me to clarify any information. And subscribe if you want to see videos similar to this one. Thanks guys!